one and all present here. I would like to begin by extending a warm welcome to Mr. Jacob Thomas, our president, Ms. Sarah Jacob, the senior vice president of student and staff welfare, welfare our director and principal, Dr. Madhav Deo Saraswat, teachers, and all students who have worked diligently to make this Republic Day a tremendous success. As we gather here to celebrate the spirit of our great nation on this glorious Republic Day, I would like to introduce, you, introduce to you a dance form that is, also, that is not only a reflection of our vibrant culture, but also a symbol of joy, energy, and unity. I'm talking about the Punjabi Bhangra dance. Originating from the land of Punjab, Bhangra is a dance form that embodies the essence of our rich heritage. It is a celebration of life, love, and togetherness. The energetic movements, rhythmic, rhythmic footwork, and infectious beats of Bhangra have the power to captivate hearts and bring people together in harmony. Bhangra is not just a dance, it's a way of life. It is deeply rooted in our agricultural traditions where it is performed during harvest, harvest festivals as a means of expressing gratitude for a bountiful harvest. Now I welcome Team Footers to present the spirit of Bhangra to celebrate freedom, diversity, and unity. Mohe mohe turang de pasanti, mohe mohe turang de pasanti. 
Thank you for that marvelous performance. Patriotic songs are the medium to reveal our love and respect, not only towards our nation, but our own selves too. They serve as a touching tribute to the heritage, culture, and spirit of our nation. With this, I would now like to welcome the Indian Music Ensemble, led by Sir Prakash Livingstone. That was beautiful. Thank you, Vishnu, sir, for that melodious performance. I would now like to request our school captains to escort our principal, Dr. Madhav Deo Saraswat, onto the stage. I would like to call upon our school captain, Shiv Punjabi, to deliver the welcome address. Mr. Jacob Thomas, President, Mrs. Sarah Jacob, Senior Vice President of Student and Staff Welfare, Dr. Madhav Dev Saraswat, Principal, Teachers and Students. Good morning and a very warm welcome. Today, as we gather to celebrate the 75th Republic Day of our great nation, let us remember that today is not just a day on the calendar. However, it is a symbol of our unity, diversity, and the spirit of a sovereign, socialist, secular, 
and democratic nation. It is a day when we come together to celebrate our principles enshrined in the Constitution and to reaffirm our commitment to the values that make our nation great. Our key speaker today is our esteemed principal, Dr. Madhav Dev Saraswath. He is a guiding light for our school, inspiring excellence in both academics as well as character. With a wealth of experience, unwavering dedication, and a passion for education, he has steered our education, to new, sorry, he has steered our institute to new heights. Today, as we stand on the threshold of yet another year of progress and learning, we are honored to have him leading the way. As we witnessed the vibrant and spirited parade by our students, let us reflect on the significance of this day. It is a day of honor, to honor the sacrifices of our forefathers who fought for the freedom we cherish today. It is a day to celebrate the diversity that makes our nation unique and strong. And it is a day to pledge our allegiance to the principles of justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity. So without further ado, let us revel in the colors of our national flag and the joy of being part of this great nation. Once again, a very warm welcome to each and every one of you. Jai Hind. Thank you, Shiv. I would now like to call upon Riva of grade 11 to present her speech. India, the seventh largest country with 28 states, eight union territories, nearly 780 languages, various cultures, and one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Good morning, respected president, Mr. Jacob Thomas, senior vice president of student and staff welfare, Mrs. Sarah Jacob, director and principal, Dr. Madhav Dev Saraswat, academic council members, teachers, and fellow students. I stand before you today with great pride and honor to address this distinguished gathering on the occasion of India's Republic Day. To remind everyone and acknowledge it, let's go back to why this day is celebrated. It, Republic Day marks the adoption of the Constitution of India on January 26, 1950, and the country's transition into a sovereign republic. As we gather here to celebrate the 75th Republic Day of our great nation, it is imperative to reflect upon the principles and ideals that form the foundation of our country. Our constitution, crafted by the visionary leaders of our freedom struggle, primarily Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, stands as a testament to our commitment towards justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity. The preamble to the constitution is a reflection of the core values that embody the constitution. It declares India to be a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. As most of us might have noticed, the term democracy is often uttered with our country's name. However, do we truly understand its meaning and importance? Democracy, in its true sense, is not merely a political system. It is a way of life, a commitment that defines our nation. India, with its rich history and diverse culture, has embraced democracy as the guiding force that shapes our collective destiny. At the core of our democratic principles lies the belief in the power of the people. The citizens of India, regardless of their caste, creed, or religion, have the right to participate in the decision-making process that affects their lives. This inclusivity is what sets our democracy apart, fostering unity and diversity. To conclude, as proud Indians, we have the responsibility to uphold and protect the values enshrined in our constitution. We must strive to create a society where every individual is treated with dignity and respect. It is our duty to actively participate in the democratic process, contribute to the well-being of our communities, and work towards the betterment of our nation. As we move forward into the future, let us carry the spirit of Republic Day in our hearts and minds. Let us strive to build a nation where the aspirations of every citizen is fulfilled, and the flame of democracy continues to burn bright. I would like to wish each one of you a very happy Republic Day. Thank you, and Jai Hind. Thank you for your enlightening speech. Percussion instruments have held a unique and fundamental role in Indian classical and folk music for thousands of years. Though their exact origins are unclear, drums and other percussions have played a vital role in shaping India's rich musical traditions. On this note, let's welcome the Indian Percussion Ensemble.
Thank you, sir, for that mesmerizing production. I would now like to invite Kashvi Bansal of grade nine to present her views on this auspicious day. Beloved Indians, nation builders, and child lovers, I hope you're all sufficiently caffeinated or at least pretending to pay attention. Happy Republic Day. Today, under the vibrant tapestry of our tricolor, we don't just celebrate a date, but the culmination of a grand dream. A republic born not from conquest, but from the collective will of people yearning to breathe free. It wasn't easy. Our freedom song was sung in whispers amongst mango trees, shouted from prison cells, and etched in the sacrifices of countless unsung heroes. It was a melody of grit and unity, a rhythm of defiance and hope. And as we stand beneath the sky stained saffron, white, and green, let's, forget, let's not forget the unfinished parts of that song. Yes, we have built roads and skyscrapers, touched the stars with our satellites, and woven our flag into the fabric of the world. Our country is like one giant, boisterous, sometimes dysfunctional family. We have 22 official languages, enough spices to rival the Milky Way, and enough festivals to leave even the moon blinking in confusion. We argue, we dance, we feast, and then we argue about who ate the last samosa. But at the end of the day, there's something undeniably beautiful about this chaotic symphony of unity and diversity. But the melody still has notes of inequality, whispers of prejudice and the hum of challenges yet to be met. Today, let's not just bask in the glory of the past, but rekindle the fire of, the, of that independent struggle. Let's be the torchbearers, not just of freedom, but of justice, of progress, of inclusivity. Let's be the generation that heals the cracks in our foundation, the generation that writes the next verse in our nation's epic poem. Let's be the doctors who bandage our social wounds, the engineers who bridge the gaps between us, the teachers who illuminate minds with torch of knowledge, the artists who paint a brighter future with every stroke. Let's celebrate the audacity, the resilience, the humor, and the heart that makes India truly incredible. Let's remember that our republic isn't just a map, it's a promise. A promise to keep building, to keep laughing, and to keep fighting for a better tomorrow. So on this Republic Day, let's not just sing pains to the past, but raise our voices in a chorus of action. Let's be the change we want to see, the architects of a future worthy of our dreams. Jai Hind. Thank you, Kashvi, for that brilliant speech. I would now like to invite our principal and director, Dr. Madhav Dio Saraswat, for his Republic Day address. Good morning once again to all of you. Honorable President, Mr. Jacob Thomas, Senior Vice President, Sarah Jacob, ma'am, coordinators, colleagues, and dear students. I have been a teacher for 36 years. On this earth, 57 years, which means that almost 54 years, I have witnessed this Republic Day celebration. But today, it was different for me. I was telling Shiv that Shiv, I am nervous, and it's a humbling experience for me to be honored and to be deceived by your own people, by your own students and colleagues as a chief guest has happened with me for the first time. So I wish to take this opportunity 
to thank all of you together for this honor. Thank you very much. Today is a joy. Today is a day of joy, pride, and celebrations. And whatever around the Republic Day had to be shared has been shared between Shiv, Riva, and Kashmi. Today I would like to break a tradition. And I would like all of us to be mindful only for a minute, for a change. And before what I have to share with the family sitting in front of me, I would like to recognize and I would like all of us to recognize and be aware that how much it takes to get ready even for this kind of celebration. Who are those people who make it happen? And how mindful are we around their effort and their hard work when we choose to come and enjoy or decide not to enjoy the way it happened in the beginning. Is there anyone except a few adults who would know that how many people must have worked for how many hours to make sure that we get the stage like this? How many hours, how many people would have hugged would have worked hard to make sure that there is proper light and sound. Not light, sound. And now, how much it would have taken to the dining hall to make sure that there is or there are some special dishes for today so that we as a nation or we as a school could have special meal because it's a Republic Day. How many of us go back and tell these people, hold their hands and tell them, thank you for making this day so very special for us. Shouldn't we be starting our day by thanking people like Suraj, his team, people like Jackson or Shashi, his team, people like Mr. Mukundan, his team, because without them, without them, all this is not possible. So I would like to start my address by expressing our gratitude to all these wonderful people, men and women, who made this possible, or such celebrations, one after the other. Can we come together and thank them together, please? <laughs> now I would like, especially our class 10, 11, and 12 students to look around them and see that you are sitting, but there are some people, some gentlemen who are standing around you. These are the people who have been serving us as our teachers, as our guardians, and as our parents. And what are they doing at this point of time? When there was a group of people, 
who worked hard for several days so that we could be entertained on this beautiful day. There are several people who ensure that everything goes well. And yet, how thankless we are that we are making these beautiful souls stand around us to ensure that we don't engage in irresponsible behavior. What gives us this right to feel so entitled that this world around us is only for me? It's only I and me. How do you feel when you look at Suresh sir, Rita ma'am, standing around you just to make sure that you don't disrupt the happiness? I am sure that there must be smiles and there must be gigglings. But what a shame it is that together as an educational institute, as students and teachers, we cannot celebrate such a beautiful day, such an important date with dignity. What is the point of coming together? What is the learning? What is the point that these young ladies have prepared those beautiful speeches for you to remind that there is a price for freedom there were people who must have thought beyond their own selves so that the nation could get the freedom. And after that, there were the people who came together and they said that let's work together, forget ourselves, forget our comforts, and what should we do so that this freedom is not wasted? and there is a self-rule. Quite often, whenever I get the chance to talk to uh, Honorable President Mr. Jacob Thomas, he uses one word most of the time. And he would say, Madhav sir, in my opinion, it is all about intent. If my intent is correct, everything else falls in place. And how right it is that it is all about our intent as learners and as teachers. That what is my intent as part of this community? Is my intent is to learn to grow? Or as an adult, is it my intent to be selfish, self-grossed? Or to be serving individual? There can be intelligent people giving big speeches, using big words, but the fact is that each one of us has to ask that what is my intent? Do I wish to remain selfish, self-centered person? Or as a human, I make a conscious choice to go beyond myself. I'm giving you just two vital examples, known but extremely vital examples, that even today in Delhi, 
the air pollution is so bad. What is the point of celebrating and calling President of France as a chief guest when you cannot afford to give him clean air? What is the reason? People like me and you who choose to be selfish and irresponsible have brought the country to this level. And we are not learning. And if another is water, what I have come to know is that in places like Bangalore, if you seek permission for construction, you will be given that permission, but there will be an exception. That permission will be that you cannot draw, you cannot take water from Kaveri. Who is responsible for this? Now translate this irresponsible behavior at a large scale to our own community that if we continue to remain as irresponsible, then obviously this independence will be taken. We will be a community of unhappy, frustrated, stressed individuals because some of us choose to remain irresponsible and some of us choose to remain selfish. If what I am sharing with the entire family as part of you, if you think that there is a merit, what I am saying that with this irresponsible behavior and selfish intent, we cannot go further, then I have two commitments to take. I wish to have, I wish to share two proposals for us for this year, starting from today until 25th January 2025. I talked about water and I talked about air. And for us, I will talk about water and I will talk about punctuality. Jacob sir and his team has collected some data on our irresponsible behavior. And there are several things, wastage of food, wastage of electricity, and several other resources. But for this year, I have a humble request with the permission of the president to all of us, that this year, we will dedicate ourselves as a community. And it is open for all, students, teachers, administrators, that this year we will find out that what is the uses of water. And the data says that all of us together spend three times the normal Indian would have spent as far as water is concerned. I'm not talking about any other consumption at this point of time. So I am requesting all of us to be mindful and to have a project to understand that why, number one, that why we end up wasting three times more than an average person. Two, how we can minimize that wastage. And fourth is that how does it help? I think the meaningfulness of education is to understand the challenges and address them as a community by coming together. And I have the permission to share with all of you that if we agree as a community and if we take it as a task for the sale, Mr. Jacob Thomas will lead this endeavor for all of us. 
I want GSIS to be an example, not only for the school going students and teachers, but for the entire nation, that how a school or the students or teachers can come together and teach a lesson that how we can preserve this most important resource called water. Are we together on this? Can I have yes or no from all of you that this year we will make sure that we don't waste even a single drop of water and all of us together understand that where are we as far as utilization or wastage of water is concerned and how we are going to limit it. Can I? I want to hear all of you say yes or no. Jacob, sir, would you be leading this? Thank you. Now, another issue is, which is like a cancer. On such a beautiful day, one should not be using such awful words. But the problem is that in my limited knowledge, I don't have any other comparative word. Because the problem with cancer is that it grows within you and most of the time you don't get to know that how it is eating the system from within and one fine day or one awful day you got to know that this cancer has eaten you from within and there is no chance of survival in many of the cases. For a community like ours, indiscipline is such a cancer. And there is one aspect of this indiscipline, which is punctuality. So today onwards, as a community, I want all of us to commit to ourselves as individuals that we will observe punctuality. At least we can start from this because it is in our hands. To be punctual is in our hands. We are, it is not dependent on any other factor. We will be punctual for our classes, we will be punctual for our sports, we will be punctual for our means. And if we are not punctual, then we will learn, we will teach each other and we will learn to be punctual. And I am taking the liberty of leading this crusade that the entire school has no choice but to learn to be punctual and there cannot be and there will not be any exception. And I would require support from all of you, and but only support is not going to, moral support it is not going to help. Each one of us has to make a conscious effort to be punctual for everything. And from there, we will start our journey on being more disciplined as a community. So these are two messages from me for the entire family, including myself. Let's continue with this joy, pride, and celebrations, and be mindful. Thank you once again for this honor Thank you for your patience.
and thank you for this silence. It's real. God bless all of us. Thank you all of us. Thank you, sir, for your enlightening speech. I would now like to request our school captain, Himangani Chawla, to deliver the expression of gratitude. It is a true honor and privilege for me to deliver the word of thanks on the day our forefathers brought the Indian Constitution into effect. Firstly, I would like to begin by thanking our chief guest, Dr. Madhav Dio Saraswat, our principal, for celebrating this auspicious day with us and for sharing his wise words. I would like to go further and thank the brass band and bugle call students for playing our national anthem. I would also like to thank each student who took part in today's parade for the consistent effort, whether it was a contingent leader or any of the students marching in the house marches, pipe and brass band, as well as the Sea Carrick Corps contingents. Of course, we would not have such a successful celebration if it, would, if it was not for our teachers who put in the effort to train us. I want to thank the Indian Music Choir and Percussion Team for their melodic and patriotic songs, followed by the dance display. Moreover, I thank Riva and Kashvi for their insightful words and Shiv Punjabi for delivering the welcome address. I would like to thank the MC, Serene Nakpal and Anika Podar for taking us to the event. Lastly, I cannot end my vote of thanks without appreciating Dr. Ambedkar, who introduced the final draft of the Constitution into the Constituent Assembly, enabling our nation to emerge powerful and victorious. Thank you and Jai Hind. Thank you, Himangani. Let us now put our hands together for our national anthem, Vande Matra. 